Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Star Wars Out in the Dark. My name is Will. I will be your storyteller this evening. And before anything, uh, earlier this week, it was ED57's birthday, so please give it up for him in the chat. Uh, also, last we left off, the group arrived in the system. Finally, after three weeks of hyperdrive, of hyperspace travel, they arrived, and in his first order as captain, Flid responded to a distress signal out by one of the moons named Thinta in the orbit of Norris. And it turned out to be a trap. Uh, and after being hailed by Pris Leonard of the Fane's Rise, they went into a chase that ended just... Uh, as they were coming into one of the orbits of Bionto Prime, and they saw a Republic cruiser named the Myriad uh, passing by, which managed to scare off Pris Leonard. They arrived on Bionto 6, where they met Jix for the first time. Uh, a revelation was made about Edie's new look, and they shut down radio out of spite. Uh, but they also did take Barnaby out with them on an adventure. They had a funeral for Marcoon. Uh, they were introduced to a few of the other farmers from the area, including a human named Atrus, uh, a Twilic named Illus, and a very familiar looking male in a wheelchair uh, that had a resemblance to Dr. Xylus Shakti. Who turned out to be their brother Drox. Uh, after a very tearful family reunion, Drox and uh, Xylus went off to his farmhouse so that she, uh, they could meet their extended family. Uh, the Twilic relayed the information that the Republic has been reassigning themselves to some outposts in the system that predate re the Republic itself because recently some veins of cortosis were found. Edie remembered from his time, from its time in the libraries, that cortosis is rough and brittle but can be sewn into clothing to create lightsaber resistant textiles, uh, which is something that dates back to rituals created by the Sith then he revealed himself as a Jedi to Illus and Jix, who were quick to kind of put their hands up like criminals. But we left off with the little conspiracy of Flid and Edie uh, outside of Jix's farm by the large tree where they buried Marcoon and Dr. Shakti reunited with their brother and their extended family after some time apart. And with this is... I think we will find the trio today because we will be missing Dr. Shakti as they are currently in transit to Washington, D.C. Hello. Uh, hello, boys. Hello. Happy birthday, Edie. And happy well, birthday. Welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade chat stream where we catch up on last week's episode of Vampire the Masquerade. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for those of you that don't follow uh, our Vampire the Masquerade stream on Mondays, uh, Brandon and Jeff are upset that they met uh, Ike's character, and he turned out to be much more of a venture than they were anticipating. Wheeling and dealing, baby. Wheeling and dealing. <laughs> Wheeling and dealing. <laughs> but since you were missing last week, and you will be missing next week. Let's start with Silas. On the ship, the last week of the trip has kind of brought about a very somber and almost depressive nature to, your, to yourself uh, as memories of Nella being taken away from you and your family have kind of started to bubble up to the surface again. There's a flooding of that day of possible futures of what could have been and 
you're not sure why it's happening. Uh, you've managed to kind of live this long, suppressing the memories and kind of just doing what needed to be done. And as of late, it's almost, it's almost like it's being fished out of the recesses of your mind and being brought up onto the boat of your memories. And it's kind of like every time that you go to throw it back in the water, this, this fish of this painful kind of regret keeps being fished up and plopped in front of you. How do you think you'd handle that? I, I think I'd, Silas is, is, especially if it's, it's a memory that he's kind of tried to put, keep in the back of his head to be able to do his daily, you know, his daily thing and keep on, on track. I mean, I think he would, he would probably start going into a very somber, almost depressive state. Um, you know, he, he's probably, he's probably, you know, he's lost again, even though Marcoon's not somebody that he's, he's, he was super, super close with, but, you know, in the, in the short time he left the lasting mark. So I'm, it, it's another loss that I'm dealing with now. Mm -hmm. And there are you definitely know, parallels. Just, yeah. And so it's, and I'm seeing a, a loss that in, in some ways is the equivalent of what I dealt with when Nella was taken with, you know, and, and what, what, what happened with Marcoon. Hmm. And so I'm, I'm probably not in a good place. Yeah. There's, there's something raw about the fact that Silas has recently come, <clears throat> excuse me, into the embrace of the force. Something that he's fought against and railed against uh, has just suddenly kind of opened a wound in him. And there's got to be a question of why. Like, why now? Of all things. You think that's something that might have been affecting him this last week? Absolutely. I'm, and the, especially the feelings that I've had, and what my mission is, what my my deep down mission is. I I. Part of me thinks that it's a sacrifice because I never wanted it that I needed to have to be able to complete my mission. That maybe it's a, it's something out there, that, told me this will help Do you, you know because deep down he's still he has his goal he has his he has his drive nothing's changed does in he, fact i'd say re-emphasized especially with what's happened does he at all wonder if nella had a hand in this I don't think it would have popped in his head. Now I didn't even I didn't even think about that till you mentioned it. Mm. Um, the thing is, is in his mind, she's always he's he must have been an afterthought to her, or, or she must have been, he must have been an afterthought to her because you know if if he's in a position where he's in his mind, she was taken away and she's struggling with her life and. Mm. When he's if so, her focus should be as he would if he's struggling is on keeping going on, pushing and doing what you need to do. So he may not have even he, his more concern was with his mother and and dealing with that and trying to cope with that. Mm. And then as a result of of what happened with her, led to yeah, what's going on now. Yeah, you come to. Uh... There's a bit of a heavy thud as the ship lands. Everybody's kind of thankful to be alive. You kind of have this feeling 
as you have not yet mastered kind of stretching out on your own, you're kind of bombarded with these emotions of um, kind of not joy, but a, a form of thankfulness. Uh, and you can hear the people kind of milling about in the common area. Uh, there's a knock at your door and you hear the strange voice of Vidi saying that they're going to be taking Barnaby on an adventure. And the weight of everything is just so great that it, it kind of makes you sit there for a moment and you can hear all the commotion outside. You can see the sunlight, uh, the waning sunlight coming in through the small viewport of your room. And only when it gets dark that there's a silence. Do you feel like the oppressive nature of everybody's emotions are finally unshackling you? Like they're so far away from you now. And they've been so far away from you for this for this extended period of time that now it's not oppressive anymore. You can freely act of your own volition. And this is one of those few things that you're starting that you don't even know if you'll ever get used to, but you but you've got to start somewhere. Uh that have come with gaining this connection to the force. And as you walk out into the empty, kind of darkened common area of the Zatsek, you see radio just sitting there off no lights just in the middle of the common room nobody else is around um i walk up to radio because that's the first quiet i've ever heard him be yep and and try to turn him back on it's a simple process and he comes to he just beeps and boops angrily and you see him kind of like spin around you i didn't do it but he shows you a hollow projection of what ed looks like now and how he has a blowtorched empty socket on his face of the curly q mustache and the little Van Dyke triangle where the mouth would be. Okay. And then he kind of beeps angrily and he he deletes the, the hollow the hollow video. You don't like it that much? And you see him just kind of roll towards the cockpit. I'll follow him. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't know if he's just leaving angrily or if he's trying to lead me somewhere. Yeah, no, you see him. He goes into the cockpit and you see him start to arm the, the weapons on the ship. Uh, what are you doing? He's just beeping angrily. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I, I like go over to him I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I just woke up. I don't speak you. What What happened? He goes over, you see him power down the ship again. And he goes over to the elevator and you see him call it up. And he goes, he motions for you to follow him and he goes down where he activates the, the protocol droid from its, okay. little, from its little sheath. And you see that it, it shimmies out. Hello, how can I be of service? Do you need anything translated? Yeah, why is he mad? And you see him beeping furiously at, at her. And... She looks over at you, she's like, oh my. It seems that your little droid friend here was forcibly shut down by your other droid friend. Edie? Or Barnaby? And after a few beeps, he, uh, and she looks at you and she's like, no, no, the large one. He was about to train the weapons on the farmhouse to get revenge. Oh, okay, we're not, we're not doing that radio. We're not doing that. Um, what what did what what did he what what did he do to you? Why are you? Is it just him shutting you down, or did he do something else? But 
You see, so angry. You see him reveal the blowtorch. And she's like, it seems that he modified your assistant or your associate. Um, it is a vulgar terminology that he is using. I apologize. After having given him a new appearance. So he's mad because he had to fix his face? Who who got modified? Who who got blowtorched? There's a, a few beeps and boops. And she's like, it appears that the astromech took it upon himself to give your other associate a new face, as it were. And it was not taken too lightly by the other party in question. Ah, uh, well, I think it's a hysterical radio. He spins, and you just see him kind of like, boo! And she's like, he says, thank you. He agrees. But please, please, I turned you back on. Um, I'm guessing that they, they're in the farmhouse, which is why you wanted to blast it out of the sky, but the captain's probably with them, too. He beeps, and she looks at you. He, he says that there some things require small sacrifices. Can radio can can you uh can I can I trust you if I leave you on because I don't want to turn you off that you will not um blow up anything in the planet we just landed on? He swivels back and forth for a little bit and then he beeps and she looks over at you he's like I can Continue to monitor him if you would like, sir. Radio, I'll put it to you this way before I leave. Um, he just all he did was turn you off. You changed his face. Hysterically, you changed his face, but you've changed his face. So I think you got the better, the better outcome of that deal. You see him roll over to one of the walls, and his knife comes on, and he just starts stabbing it. Okay. And the, okay. the the protocol droid looks at you. He's like, "I will make sure that this does not escalate from from that, sir." Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'll grab my what? What, what do I? What's the what planet are we on? You're in Biontol Six. Okay. Well, out of character, do I? Am I? Have I ever been here, or do I need to think of a? Do I have to recall of an alias? You okay. have you have never been here. Okay. So you are safe. Okay. So um I will go grab my hat, grab my coat, grab my sidearm, and um I'll make my way out. Okay. As you descend the landing ramp, you feel a crisp kind of cool air about it. It looks like the planet is in an autumnal state. Um you can see what looks to be lights in the distance of different farmhouses. Uh, and it looks like fields of some kind of irrigated plant uh, stretch out before you. Like the ship landed at the far end of what would be the proper line of this, of the farm that... Um, you can see it's the closest set of lights. But it looks like there's another three in the distance of different farmhouses. Excuse me. Um, I get, I'm assuming that ED, I mean ED, that radio was going to be shooting the, at the, clo the closest one. Yeah. Yeah, the ship is pointed so start, in that direction. Yeah. So I'll start walking towards that one. Okay. As you start to, to trudge towards this farmhouse... Edie and Flid, you are taken inside by Chix after the burial. Uh, he shows you around the house, and he kind of gives one room to Krilla and one of the extra rooms to Hattie. He says that the two, that your crew, um, like he looks at the, at the two of you, and he kind of lets Illis uh, prepare some tea. Uh, Jix welcomes you to his house. You can stay in the basement if you'd like. Thank you, Jix. 
Any, thank you. Thank you, Jigs, for so much for your hospitality. Any, welcoming. any friend of Marcoon's is a friend of Jigs. Friend of ours, then. And you see him kind of go and sits down on a small recliner. Uh, Illis comes in and he kind of sets aside some some little teacups uh, for everybody except eating. Uh, he sets aside some cream, some uh, a little mug of sugar cubes, a little jar of, of like what looks to be a natural honey. Uh, and he sits down opposite the two of you. I don't mean to pry, Jedi, but why are you not here with a Republic troop? Try to do the voice. Hold on. Yeah. Hello? You see? The the Repub the Republic sort of knows that I'm alive. But they also don't really know that I'm here. Hmm. My relationship with the Republic is difficult right now. That makes two of us, then, I suppose. And you? We are... What is the nature? We are in a difficult position, as the Republic has laid claim to the system. And as such, they are signing an interim senator to represent us. However, because the system has no indigenous intelligent creatures the claim either falls on the farmers union which Jix and I are part of or it falls to the mining guild which has laid claim here before So is the problem that there is a divide between who should be leading? Correct. There, the Farmers Union will pick democratically a representative, but the Mining Guild, as everyone knows, is just uh, willing to lick the boot of the Republic to get a few more scraps. Is there a time for you all to meet and discuss? Or has this moment already passed? We have a month to come up with a counter proposal. Uh, and you hear Jix. Jix would like Illis to tell them about the, about the, the beacon. Jix would like this very much. And Illis kind of looks at him, and then he slowly looks back at the two of you. Uh, Be what beacon? You you have to understand that uh, our friend Jix is a a dreamer of sorts, and you hear the sudden whistling of the kettle. He's like, "Excuse me." He gets up and goes to the kitchen. Uh, you can hear Hattie and Krilla kind of upstairs, moving around. And Jix kind of looks at the two of you. Jix wishes to know how long you will be staying with him. I look at Flid. <clears throat> not, not long. We won't 
we won't be in, of any trouble to you, Jix. We came because Krilla and Hattie needed somewhere safe to stay. Krilla, after all, she is she's she's blessed a bundle of joy. Jix has noticed. Her. He needs somewhere safe to away from the Republic. He figured she'll be safe here with you. That's okay. He nods. And he's like, Jigs is curious who paid for the, the cross species insemination. Jigs was not aware that this was a cheap process. And you hear. Illis walk back in with the tea kettle. Uh, that's that is a little rude to ask. Jigs. Could I make like a? What, I don't know what kind of check that would be, just to see what what I know about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it yeah. could it could either be a culture's role, a scholar role, an alien species role. Depends on which angle you want to attack it from. It could be just. A first aid or medicine roll if you have it, but you don't have medicine. I got first aid. I'm gonna do the same. Uh, I got more dice in first aid than I do have in any of the knowledge. All of my knowledge is four across the board. Okay, sure. Um, ah, man, uh, can I use first aid to understand oh. it? Oh, but like, okay, all right, okay, 20. I don't know how it works, just like the history behind it. Yeah, that would be one of the other ones then. It would be like cultures or alien species. <laughs> I like the All two right. the two extremes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um so because of the one on the wall die, you assume that it is a thing that people do just to be flashy. Um it's maybe like a conversation starter. Most most species don't don't try to cross pollinate. Uh, but from from the little bit of the comings and goings of the different ships that Flit has been on, uh, you know that cross pollination is possible. But it it is a kind of either an extreme where people have a dire need to do it, and they, they end up selling almost everything just to make ends meet for it, or it is a vanity project, uh, excuse me, for two kind of rich socialites to come together to kind of create a hybrid. Uh, there's no in-between. It's one or the other. Interesting. It just pours all of your tea, except for 80. Could um, I have an empty cup just to feel a part of this? He nods, and he goes and grabs you one. I hold it daintily in my hand. Sure. Now you're, now you're like part of the group, Edie. Thank you, Captain. Um... Yeah, we we haven't really discussed any of that with Krilla guarding cross species pollination. We have respected boundaries and everything. It's been an emotional ride, all of us, but most of her, most of all for her. Jake's understands. He was just curious. important is that she's she's bringing new life into this world Jake nods you see Illis take a sip out of his tea Raccoon would have been happy he was happy he was nervous too <laughs> he was there telling me about it Yeah, would have been a great dad. Jakes is going to be an uncle. 
Six is excited. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you are gonna be an uncle. Congrats, Jix. And I grab the teacup. I, I smell it first to see, you know. It smells bitter. It smells bitter. Yeah, but you see the Twilik is, is drinking it without any of the sugar or honey. May I? They both not. I grab some sugar. I, you know, I, sh I chef it up. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, just right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Cheers. But yeah, you, he, you see Illis kind of look at you as you're, as you're drinking. And he looks over at Jix. And then he kind of comes back and takes, sits back in his chair. just like, There is a rumor uh, that has been prevalent amongst the the union and the guild. Uh, there's no proof to it. You must understand it's just hearsay. But there is supposed to be a beacon, a, a what is called a... If I could find it, a beacon of discovery that uh, dates back to the hyperspace wars, but it is in the middle of Buntor Prime. No ship can sustain itself under that pressure or even within the gas. Uh, the Republic has kind of sent ships in and has lost a myriad of them in the process uh, because none of their filters can filter out the gas quite well enough uh, and the pressure alone is very destructive against starfighter hulls uh, and the bigger ships tend to tend to misfire their hyperdrive and micro jump into the nearest planet so no pilot is fast enough to operate the filters on their ship appropriately enough and shut down the hyperdrive process at the same time I look at the lead look at EV I can turn off the hyperdrive very easily. You're saying the Zod, the Zod Zek is possible of making this type of travel. This type of trip. Dude, we don't fly a fighter, we fly a freighter, no? Yeah. yeah, it's a space transport. It's big enough, I believe. What is this beacon? Any ideas? Um, Illis sits up and he looks at the two of you. If any of the previous beacons are to be used as an example, uh, it would measure something as tall as this room and maybe... Uh, as wide as that sofa that you are sitting in. Uh, Do you have a cargo bay? Do you have a cargo bay? Yeah. It could fit. It was supposed to be a beacon announcing the declaration of a discovery of a system, and it was supposed to be set in the center of the system to kind of pulse out with the coordinates of said system, kind of like a hyperspace buoy. And what exactly would this help with? It would 
one give us an understanding of who actually has claimed the system and whether or not their race still exists uh, but also it would keep it out from either the union or the guild since the system has already had claim to it neither one of us could step in That would mean that the Republic cannot choose an, an interim senator. It would be very beneficial. Can I use astrogation to see where um, where we are exactly? Um, I, wait, hold on. There, mm -hmm. My astrogation has a, a star next to it. Does that mean it's only for old maps? Yep. Arm, arm, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I still want to use it. Yeah. Um, just because I want to see if um like if I knew if this part of space was owned by someone back then. Okay, go ahead and roll. Can I do I use my force? No. I'm gonna use I'm gonna add character. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna roll first. Yeah. Well, okay. and I'm gonna add one character point. Okay. Let me see how good that goes for you. 15 15 total uh kind of going back to the maps that you remember the hyrinth hull system that you're in right now isn't in any of the known star maps so this is a recent discovery yep yeah recent rediscovery as it were especially if what they're telling you of uh beacon discovery is real this, so this beacon would be a beneficial, right? They both not. Something also tells me Jix knows Zodzek is more than capable of doing this trip. He he looks this. down. He looks down at his cup, uh, and then he looks back up. Jix would may yep. Jix would understand how simple it is to inc to install a small tractor beam on the ship. Jix cannot go with you, however, as Jix has new family to look after. And Jix would not want you to do this trip, since it is dangerous. And Jix values his new friends. Do you have a tractor beam? Jigs can spare. find one with friends. Captain. Jigs has friends at the Republic base. Um, I'm going to have to take this up. The rest of my crew. That sounds funny saying that. It's not, I'm not used to it. I can't, I'm still not used to saying that. Um, you see uh, one of uh, you see one of the one of the light bulbs in the lamp above you suddenly turn red, and Jix rushes over and grabs a, a rifle. Jix's perimeter alert has been alerted. Yeah. Uh, it, it it might it might be it might be Silas. Jix thinks Maybe. it's one of those six legged beasts, and you see him kind of go or outside. You, would a man? Would a humanoid set it off? Uh, Illis kind of looks at you. He's like, "Yeah, it 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 is a motion sensor, so anything that m motions, it would sense." He is going to shoot Silas. It could be Silas. He might have made his way out to the farm. Let's walk outside. I'll walk outside. I mean, yeah, I go. I go outside with Jix. Okay. Yeah. You see, uh, Jix has gone over to a control panel and he's flicked on, and you hear a transformer kind of start to vibrate and and hum into life, and slowly lights start turning on in the field. 
And then you see the familiar silhouette of the long coat, the hat. It's kind of like meandering towards the farmhouse. I look, um, I see if I can, I, I see if I can make it out even more. Um, and see if it's Silas or somebody else. Or sure. make, uh, make a perception check. Is it is uh, is it low light? Yeah. Area. Yeah. yeah. So I can use my enhanced senses. Sure. Eighteen. Damn. Yeah, it's Silas. Jakes, Jakes, don't, don't, don't shoot, don't shoot. And I start waving, and I, and I, I jump in front of Jakes. Okay. It's he's he he's he that's that's Silas. He's 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 one of us. He's he's ours. He's actually a very he was really close to Marcoon as well. Jix almost <sighs> shot him. This would have been another sad day for Jix. It it would have been a very, very sad day for all of us. <laughs> like I can't deal with any more sadness already. But you see, you see the commotion at the front of the house, Jeff, as you come up and everybody's kind of standing there looking at you. Uh, you see that Flid and Edie are standing next to this small, weird looking creature. And then there's a Twi'lek next to them that kind of comes out. Um, Wave with Barnaby. Oh yeah, and Barnaby's there. Yeah. We're recording the whole conversation so you can show it to Silas. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll keep uh I'll keep walking over. Yep. Once you're close enough, Barnaby just like hops down the steps and kind of runs over to you. Well, hello there, little one. And he just pat him on the head. Yeah, he just raises his hands. Pick him up, I yep. guess. Yeah. Sorry. Silas. Oh, that was close. That was close, Silas. Oh, man. I almost got shot. What did you do first? Uh -huh. Ah, Jigs. And I hold Barnaby in one hand and take yeah. my hat off. And, like, I, and I put it like down and I'm like, I'm, I'm incredibly sorry for your loss. He nods and he's just like, Jix is incredibly sorry he did not shoot you, but he is glad that you are a friend of Marcoon's. So Jix is ultimately happy. So, okay. Sorry he did not shoot you. You're sorry you didn't shoot me, or you're sorry you're glad that you didn't shoot me? Jix believed you were a poacher, so he wanted to shoot one, but you are not. So, this day is not for Jix. But you are a friend, so Jix is happy. I'm so happy that Jix is happy. I put the I put the hat back on. I'm like, I, I'm I'm thrilled that Jix is happy. It's my Silas is my first first yeah first first mate first mate yeah first mate. Oh, yeah, that was that was <laughs> that that that, that yeah. was that, that was kind of voted. That was yeah. gonna be our team meeting later. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't tell you, Edie. Dolvin was it, Jix's first mate, so I am I am pleased. So Jix is pleased. Are the girls all right? They are upstairs. Jix has shown them to their rooms. I ex I, I explained to Jix that they needed somewhere to stay, be safe, and stay safe, especially with the baby. I mean, and everything. He's just ha is thrilled. He's going to be an uncle. Mazel tov. Um, I, I believe that uh, Makun would be happy that there would be somebody who cares deeply for him and for that child in, in that child's life.
Jigs appreciates your words. There is tea inside. And you see him just matter of factly just turn around, turn off the lights on the on his field and kind of walk back in to where he was sitting. The the Twilik at the door kind of like sips his tea, he looks at you, he's like, My name is Elis. It's good to meet you. I um I extend my extend my hand out and well actually no, I take my hat off and like it's a pleasure. Yep. Uh, but you walk in, and as you do, you see that they take the cup from Edie, they pour some tea in it, and they give it to you. I grab it, yeah. smell it. It's a little bitter. It smells a I little bitter. I take my hat off when I go walk inside the house, and I'll put it down somewhere. <clears throat> and then, um, I'll, sip, I'll sip the tea. I lean, I lean over to, to Silas and... and... My, you might want to put some sugar and some honey. Trust, yeah. me. The, Trust me. The second you swallow, like the inside of your cheeks collapse inward from how sour this thing is. Uh, but the, the room that you're in is a little living room. There's a window that leads out that kind of shows out into the corn, the, into the, the field of whatever crop it is. Um, there's a painting of what looks to be a Jix, a Mon Cal, which must be Marcoon, and then the Rodian that all you kind of remember as being Mao. Uh, kind of like a characterized uh, version of themselves on top of what is now the Zatsak. Uh, there's a little bit of a fireplace isn't on right now. The windows are cracked open. Uh, but one of the archways kind of leads back into where the kitchen is. And then there's an open, large archway that kind of leads out into the foyer where the stairs are that lead up to the rest of the house. Uh, but Illis kind of looks over. He's just like, I was explaining to your captain and your ship's droid uh, slash Jedi that uh, there are issues that we are facing currently uh, and Jigs was uh, protesting letting you use the ship which has been passed down to you uh, to acquire what is a beacon of discovery from the center of the gas giant at the heart of this kind of planetary system that you find yourself on. And this, uh, what, what, what is it? What's to be done with this beacon once it, if, if it's this, if it's gotten to us? I'm, I'm assuming that there's an issue given that it's still there and nobody has claimed it. It is not known if the beacon actually exists is the problem mm. the beacon is whispered uh there are mentions of it in some of the union almanacs and some of the guild masters uh log books but there is no proof the only proof we do have is in the cortosis Do I know what that is, Will, given my... Your penchant for murder? Yes. Uh, let's have you make... Let's have you make a streetwise roll. Okay. Okay. Given the underbellies that you've kind of been in, you've heard people mention it in hushed tones. Um, and it's always been in regards to like Sith uh, and the whole kind of destruction of the Jedi. Uh, but you don't know exactly what it is. 
Um, so, so what, what exactly does is is this used for? It's like it is very brittle uh, and hard to even consider using for a, anything, but it is said that if woven into textile for clothing, that it can make a lightsaber resistant clothing. Anti Jedi armor. Hmm. The right amount can even destroy a lightsaber outright. Pretty dangerous stuff. The wrong hands. Hmm? It could it could lead to the destruction of the Jedi Council. Or it could be wonderful stuff in the right hands. Are there right hands? Our hands. If the Republic has such crooked officers, who knows if there are any similar like-minded Jedi? A Republic I once held so high has fallen from grace. To see that Ron righted, I think this could be beneficial to us. Since you're seeing it for the since you're seeing it for the first time, Silas, every time that Edie talks, the little glow that comes from his mouth illuminates his mustache and his little uh, his little triangle of Van Dyke under his mouth. I just start I just smirk when I see that. I um I wholeheartedly agree with Edie here. Um, I, I believe that this could be quite beneficial for us. Um, if it can stop a lightsaber, it can stop a blaster. This sorry to interrupt and bother. I I just it's it's really bothering me. Really. I know I'm a guest, and I'm sorry, and they, and I'm excusing myself right now. Is there any way we can get another teacup, please? And this looks at you, he's like, I will see what there is in the cabinet. And he gets up and goes to the kitchen. Okay. Oh my god. Don't piss off these people, please. <laughs> That is my family's recipe. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Fools! Um, but you know he does, what, just he, have to go back in the kitchen and just do it. <laughs> he comes back and, with a mug and he hands it to Edie. This is best I can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Edie is part of this crew. He is family. And it was kind of bothered me that he was the only one without a mug or a cup sure I, from now on I will prepare it in a tea set meant for bigger parties thank you I, 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 thank you but as we were discussing and as he says that <coughs> excuse me you see the Hollow projector of the television set kind of come to life with an emergency broadcast from the Republic. Uh, and you see that there is a kind of protocol droid front and center um, that just goes through the motions of this not being an actual emergency, but that if it were an emergency, they would give you directions on what to do and what you were facing. Uh, but instead, it's just a proclamation of the arriving dignitaries and the senator in interim that has been appointed to the system. And it shows you a picture of an older human male who has a salt and pepper beard and just this 
streak of white at the temples that is kind of shot backwards into the rest of his hair. And before the name is even typed out for you in front of you, you recognize it as Major Grandel Rames. Motherfucker. No. Oh. And you see there are two robed figures behind him. And the report continues to say that he will be arriving within the next couple of days uh, on Biontal 6 to perform his standard kind of uh, inspection duties of the Republic bases, uh, but that he will be protected by the two uh, bodyguards that have been given to him by the Jedi Council. And the droid introduces the first one, which steps forward, removes its cloak, and you see that it is an older human male. Not as old as Reims, but maybe like late 20s, early 30s. And he's got a kind of walnut beard that has some kind of streaks of white in it. <clears throat> um, long, tussled kind of walnut hair. Uh, very soft eyes. Soft, gentle kind of light eyes. Uh, and the report at the bottom shows his name as being Jedi Knight Doman Crow. And then you see the other road figure step forward and very kind of thin hands reach up and pull the hood back. And there is a beautiful, uh, for the species, kind of female that has this uh, long ponytail that sprouts up like a mushroom out of the top of her head and kind of comes down into a braid uh, that has jewelry kind of coming down her oblong head and keeping it kind of uh, cascading down the back of her head. And the name that comes out is Nella Randul, his apprentice. Oh, no. I, I dropped my, the cup. Mm -hmm. Like, I literally just dropped the cup. Yeah, it shatters. We may need that armor sooner than we think. You see my my hands kind of... You guys have never seen me like this. Like, you guys just see me start shifting and my arm, my hands just squeeze. Lean over to Dallas and put my hand on his shoulder. You okay? That's 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 her. Who? I look at him puzzled as well. And I walk up to the screen. Yeah, it's a hollow projection, kind of, so it's three dimensional. I, I walk up to, so I walk up to the hollow projection, and I'm just kind of doing this. I'm like, she's, she's so, she's gotten so much older. Yeah. And you see that she is smiling. She's kind of waving at the audience that's gathered there of, of other senators. And you can see the chancellor and a couple of his aides kind of sitting there and like shaking the hand of uh, Major Rames, shaking the hand of uh, Doman Crow. And they shake her hand. Uh, and in the back, just almost trying to not be seen by the hollow projector you can see the familiar blue and green outline of the purple skinned uh woman that was a republic agent back on ha yeah. on uh, bespin that's, that's yeah near a haze the assassination attempt just got pushed i just that's 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 my that's my sister. 
She's alive. Your sister is a Jedi. I guess. I, 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 I guess. I guess so. Slam my my hands on the table. Mm-hmm. Both of them. Some of the some of the cups jiggle, and one of them cup turns over. When when he does that, I kind of shake my head out of it, mm-hmm. and I walk over to the other side to look at the the male Jedi. Um, you recognize the eyes. It's the same kind of little boy that was there when she was taken. That was reassuring her. He he was he was there too. I'll never forget those eyes. He, and I look at Edie, I'm like, do you know him? Um... Do you know who his master is? The name Domen Crow. He responded when those triangle ships, the, the web, jumped out of hyperspace when I first met you. But that is as far back as I know. He was the one in the Aether Sprite. I put a face to to him now. I remember those eyes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this wholesome <laughs> this wholesome moment brought to you by yeah, this wholesome wholesome dead, Deadpool. <laughs> um, he was there when when she was taken. I I need I need to find out who his master was. I may be able to access those records, but we would have to be uncoruscant. Food food for thought. I I know we're We're, we're dealing with other things right now. I'm just... And I look back back at, at the hologram again, and I just walk out. I grab my hat, and I walk outside. Okay. Illis is picking up the, the broken pieces. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, and he looks over at you guys. He's like, I assume that something has troubled your group. You have I just... come in contact with these frames before, it looks like. Sadly. I'm just looking at Nora Hayes. Yeah. She's, her image is still there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at that it's out of my head. Um, what would be the... How would we be able to get a sample if not a small cluster of the cortosis you would have to be part of the mining guild they are the only ones allowed to go into the tunnels we only have connections to the farmers union so we can't help you there captain if we were to be able to get the cortosis, we would be able to further the ideas set forth from our time on this. She's 
going to be here, Ed. How many? How many days are they? How how many days out are they? Uh, at least two, at most four. We have two to four days, Flid. It's going to be here. Hear me out. If we use the Zotzek to travel inside the, uh, it's Buntul three. Yes, Buntul Prime. To travel into Buntul Prime, and we uh, and we grab the Beacon of Discovery. It would be us giving it to the now Senator Major Rames, putting us. Right in front of him. He's gonna be there, Edie. And he could be in front of us. If the cards are played correctly. Don't play cards, Edie. I play chess. And this is three moves ahead. You want the king and queen, yet we are still looking at pawns. Jix, we're gonna need a tractor beam. Jix has friends in the Republic base. We're gonna need to get close. We're gonna help each other out. You friend. Jix appreciates his new friends. And I look. Oh no, you first. Uh, I look behind and I look at the where Silas walked out. Silas and I are gonna get exactly what we need. Jix is happy to help. Ellis. He turns to look at you. Do you have any contacts in the mining guild? Or is this something that we can do without permission? There are a handful of things that you can do without permission if you are looking to Get on the wrong side of the Republic. But as far as contacts in the guild go, I have none. <clears throat> Jigs might be able to squeeze some information from one of his contacts on the rebel base. But that would be three or four degrees How did separated. You find out about the cortosis if you have no contacts. He takes a moment, <clears throat> excuse me, and he looks at Jix, and Jix nods at him. Jix trusts them. Jix encourages you to show them. And he reaches into his pocket, and you see him pull out a small kind of like bag of this shimmering gray white black collection of broken kind of pieces of that look like obsidian uh, he's like this was on a poacher who tried to steal some of my uh cluntucks and The Republic is 
keen to turn a blind eye to our form of justice since they don't have the manpower to kind of provide around the clock protection to all the farmers. So I found this on a poacher. And I had it yeah, analyzed. I use armor repair to see how much that would get like how much that would if if if, if done correctly, how much that would like pan out to be. It's not an armor repair role, it would be more of like a tailoring. Oof. God. Yeah, which is like a specialty. Yeah. Can I just use knowledge then? Or technical? Uh. Let's have you use... Have you use your scholar? That'd be the closest thing to it. Seventeen. Okay. <clears throat> you look at it, it's roughly the size. The bag is not big, it's easily like maybe two human fingers wide. And maybe three human fingers, like, tall. The flakes look like they're maybe the size of fingernails. Um, if you crush them up and, and use, like, a very delicate port, mortar and pestle, you could probably get enough for, like, a glove. That is enough. For a glove. Which could grab a lightsaber. I'm sorry. My head's elsewhere right now. Would it be... How... Where would I have to go to turn that into a glove that would fit my friend Silas? This kind of... He's taken aback from him. He's like... I don't... I don't know if there are any... If there are any tailors who are proficient with the use of orthosis. If there are, it would be a closely guarded secret, I think, kept on Coruscant. It is still an opportunity to think. Is it not, Captain? Can we find these poachers? They are said to operate out of some backwater hunting lodge. Uh, it's not far into the swamp, but it's not the place I would go taking my ship into. You would need a skiff. I got that. First things first, we definitely need that tractor beam. Jix can go tomorrow. He can Jix can take you if you'd like. Do that tomorrow. How long will it take to once we get one? How long will it take for it to be built into the ship? Depending on size, Jix can take a day to install it on the on the ship. 
at least a three day or two, correct? That is correct. Arrive. God, okay. Mines are off limits, correct? To non guild members, it's almost impossible to get into one of the tunnels. Why is it difficult to get in? They check for ID and their it... ships are labeled. Is it how how is it more of a security system or armed guards? Both. I can get us by security systems. Armed guards, no. You can, Edie. You're a Jedi. have to allow you access you can say that they sent you here to investigate the court hoses and to make sure everything is good and safe before the two other jedi arrive you gotta talk to silas you gotta get him aboard on this as well I'm going to turn on my comms and just, like, call Silas over. As this has been happening, Silas, I imagine that you're just walking around outside. Mm -hmm. um, there's a moment where something catches your eye on the horizon. It's a bit of a, of a burst of blue. And as you kind of look, you see... Just the little streaks of what looks to be these star fragments kind of just b burning up in the atmosphere like shooting stars. Um, and there's just like blue pops, uh, purple pops of light. Um, it's, it's almost soothing in a way. Um, uh, and after a moment, you see a few of them kind of streaking up above you. And as you kind of crane your head up and you look up at these streaks of blue and purple, there's a sudden pop of orange and then a sudden pop of red. And for a brief instant, there's just this shot of a dozen or so that kind of just shoot by. And the way they skip off of the atmosphere and kind of flare up, you see them form an image of Nella to you. And there's a moment where you hear her voice in your head. It's not the little girl that you remember. It's a full grown woman's voice and you just hear, I'm, I'm excited to finally meet you. And I haven't, you haven't forgotten you. And then you hear the voice. Oh, she hasn't forgotten you. Or is that just what you wish her to say to you? Is that that long-kept 
box that you refused to open. All the things you'd want her to say to you. All the things you hope she'll say to you. He's a Jedi now. And you're a criminal. You're the thing Jedi's hunt and bring to justice. She could never want to be excited to be with you. Let's get that straight from now on. You just feel it recede back. And then you hear a voice in your comms. Silas? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, CD. We need to discuss. Uh, I'll be right inside. I'm sure you heard, Flid, but he'll be right in. I'll look up to the sky like one more time, and then I'll turn around and uh. There's just one final flare of blue. And I'll head back in. You see him come in after a moment after he gets your message. We have a plan. Do you want to hear it? I'm all ears. Captain Flid and I are thinking of using my Jedi title to get us into the mines under the guise of investigating the Cortosis for the safety of the two Jedi arriving with Major Reigns. Nora Hayes. My understanding is that if we were to break off the team in two, one of us goes with radio to Buntal Prime. Retrieve the beacon. Retreat, yeah, yeah, yes. Retrieve the beacon. So that when we, so upon the return of the beacon, it needs to be hand delivered to the senator. So that he can declare who is the proper uh, uh, what, what's the term? Oh my gosh. Senator. Uh, no, not owner Pro of the planet. Uh, claimant? Claimant. The proper claimant to the planet the system while the other two go and Acquire the Cortosis. Can I take out my lightsaber? So. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're checking for identification. You may just need this. Depending on who goes. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, it's a bit... Harry to get to that beacon and um, it seems to me that you have a little bit more control over the functions of a ship than, than, than the rest of us yes um, is, is this a are we a four man team now um, I don't see Dr. Shakti oh the doctor is with her bro their brother they have a brother on this planet? Like a flood. Yeah, we were kind of surprised about that, but yeah, they have a brother. 
and Mr. Shakti could use the family time. Mr. Shakti was very happy, actually. It was a very... Mm -hmm. Oh. That's not she true. Yeah, she deserves it. She deserves whatever time she has. Not to include them. But um it's gonna be just us three. So are we going to this to the cortosis to try to obtain some to use in our, our, our for our advantage? Hey this is you know what? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is I'm... an Sorry. issue. None of us know how to form the cortosis. Okay. Right. The captain. This is the plan. And the plan is once hooks up holds the, the tractor beam to the Zatzak. I will fly the Zatzak, get the beacon. I'm more than capable of flying the the, the 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 ship thanks to thanks to society's training me, showing me. Plus with Barnaby if you don't mind, Silas and Radio, I think I can manage with them too. The ship. Edie. You and Silas can go into the mines using your Jedi credentials. Could also be of use to you in the mines, but I'm pretty sure they can just show you around. If not, I could have guided you. Mines, it's, it's like a walk in the park for us and my people. Didn't your droid say that he was instrumental in keeping your ship from jumping into hyperdrive? Okay, I've only been captain for not that long, so... But yeah. Now you're merely asking, as he relayed that information freely. Could we not all... Could... Hold on. Could we not also just dismantle the hyperdrive? You could. You'd be at the mercy of your impulse drives to and from Bionto 6 to Bionto Prime. How long would that take? Uh, I don't know the specs of your ship, but at worst, it could take three days to get there. <clears throat> Need a hyperdrive. <clears throat> Need that hyperdrive, ED. You could use the hyperdrive to get there. Have radio dismantle it. Travel inside Buntal Prime. Receive the beacon. Exit the atmosphere. And then repair it. You would be at the mercy of however long it takes for your droid to repair your hyperdrive. How good is radio? Don't ask me. We are not on talking terms. Ask yeah. Jix. He's quite mad at you. I'm quite mad at him. Jix. How good is e uh, radio? Jix did not program radio to repair. Jix programmed radio to destroy. He is good at that. Too good. And Barnaby, did you not assist me in repairs? You see him put both his hands up. Oh, what if we were to um uh, 
what what as much as the the cortosis is enticing to me um would would it be better for us to just pool our resources to try to get the beacon save the cortosis What the Jedi don't know cannot be used to hurt them. And if anything, it's leverage for your lives. Need both, don't we? My master used to say that knowledge was not power. I fear, in this situation, he would be wrong. We are already stronger than the Major. For we know that in the event he has us to the wall, the knowing of Cortosis can get us off of it. Ellis, nuts. Can we have your sample, just in case? Thanks, out of flake. Hand it to you. Thank you. I put it in my special pocket. Oh, right in your bum hole. Those legs. Oh hell, you. Know, yup. That's that's canon. <laughs> that's canon now. God have mercy. That's a special pocket. Oh man. Pocket. Only for little oh, things. Like, like Cardosis flakes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Oh boy. Yep. Uh... But at this point, you see Jix kind of get up and stretch. He's like, Jix is going up to bed. He has, Jix has prepared the basement for you. Jix hopes you tomorrow, enjoy. More morning, Jix. Tractor beam. Tomorrow, Jix will lead you to the Republic base where he has friends. Where Jix has friends. It will be good for Jix to pilot the ship once more. Um, okay. Let me see him start to climb up the stairs. He's like... Thank you, Jix. Jix wishes you all a good night. <clears throat> Good evening. Yeah, you see Illis kind of go over, opens a closet, pulls out a, a pillow and a blanket, and kind of tosses it onto the onto the couch. He's just like, I will make myself comfortable up here if you need anything. Thank you, Illis. Sorry about your tea set. It's not my tea set. It's Jigs's. But you guys go down into the basement and you see that it extends the whole diameter, like the whole perimeter of the house. There are a handful of cots that have been kind of laid out. Uh, on one table, there is about half a dozen um, kind of blankets and pillows. Um, it looks like this is a, a kind of place that some people kind of stay over a lot. Yes. We, we, need, uh, we need to tread very carefully, Flynn. I know revenge is a very powerful, powerful thing. But you need to try to keep a level head because, if, like I told you before, if you're dead, you can't get revenge, much revenge in that point. There's a sign, Silas. Both of us. You've waited too long from what you've told me. Try here. I 
reach up to his shoulder. I'm like, got this under control. I just smile. <laughs> I have I have strange trust in you, my friend, Captain. I have strange trust in you. Um, I haven't seen Nella since we were both very young, before she was stolen from our family. Her 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 being gone led. My, what remained of my family into a snowball effect leading to my mother's early own ultimate demise i i've never forget not forgotten that i will never forget that i'm sorry I, I, I nod to Edie. I'm strangely comforted by that at this point with you and that ridiculous mustache. And I just wink at him. And I I sit down on the, one of the cots and I kind of just grab the hat and I just put it over my face and I just lay down. Yep. Good night, Captain. Good night, Edie. Bonnie. Good night. I lay down on one of the cots too. Yeah. Hey, um, you think Jix was serious about flying the ship? I mean, yes. It was Jix's ship before we. I'm just take it over. Uh, I'm just, you know, it, it's true. I just got, I'm just getting used to it in our ship. Yeah. Zot Zach. Zot Zach. Just keep repeating those my my son's names as I talk him to sleep. Yeah. There's <clears throat> excuse me. Ed doesn't really need to sleep. I just like the Barnaby all night. Yeah. So as you're kind of standing there or sitting down with Barnaby and kind of like inter interfacing with him. There comes a moment where your interface is suddenly broken and you can feel a presence in the room. It's familiar and you can feel it kind of slithering for a moment before you can hear footsteps, but, but there's no, there's nobody here to to match those footsteps but they're, they're getting closer infrared shows nothing just the heat signatures of silas okay. and flid and above you illis is still on the couch patty krilla jakes they're still in their rooms and then there's a sudden, there's a sudden kind of heat signature that just pops up in front of you, like a hand. And it, it is the first time that, <coughs> excuse me, that Edie has ever felt surprise, I think, like true shock. And as you pull yourself, push yourself back. There's an outline as you switch back to your regular vision and it looks like a humanoid. There's, he's almost as tall as Silas. And it, it is a he, cause you can see the broad shoulders. You can see just the musculature of what has to be just a bodybuilder type, uh, There's these four <clears throat> <clears throat> soft tendrils that look to be coming down where 
either side of the chin would be and where either side of the jaw would end there's these soft tendrils that kind of come down off of the face there's no hair but it does look like there's more tendrils that make up a kind of almost like dreadlocks coming down and as it bends down in front of you there's a sadistic glee in its face as he kind of looks at you and that familiar voice comes out it's good to see you face to face at least the face you pretend to have and you feel a sudden tug at the ocular receptors and the audible receptors of your mind and there's a sudden flash as everything shuts off for you what your vision goes black sound is barely audible to you but it's not coming from the receptors in the head it's coming from the actual crystal from the node and there's no way for you to kind of vocalize the sudden fear that is shooting through your system. And as you try to reach out <coughs> to kind of get control and push yourself onto your feet, you can feel not hands, not fingers, but the actual force. You can feel it kind of squeezing either side of you and just forcing you out of your cradle. Flid wakes up to the sound of metal kind of being churned and ripped apart. Uh, and you see that Edie's head is off to one side. The crystal itself has been pulled off of its cradle and kind of left to one side and Barnaby's kind of sitting there confused and uh, his little hands are on top of the crystal very protectively like trying to bat away whatever did this to him and in the cot where you had left Silas there's nothing but emptiness and there's a coldness in the room Silas, while this is happening, suddenly has a moment where he sits up in the middle of the dark and he can see that Edie is looking around strangely, uh, trying to figure out what's going on. And then there's a moment where he just sees the head almost ripped out from its socket forcibly like legos being pulled apart by an angry child and then softly the head is laid down on the floor and then the same anger same angry child pulls free the crystal from its cradle and after some juggling sets it on the floor where you see barnaby rush over and kind of wave its hand away at whatever did this to its friend. And that's when you see the same kind of humanoid male step over so that he's sitting on the cot next to you. And there's a moment where he starts to fade from translucence into reality. Still kind of ethereal, still shimmering, and still kind of see-through in places. But he kind of cocks his head at you, and he's just like, It is a pleasure to finally meet you, Silas. Let me help you get to your sister. Because I think her and I have had this homecoming overdue. 
and you see him reach out as he stands over you and he vanishes and as he vanishes you you feel almost like if somebody's putting you on like a suit almost like an edgar suit uh to call back to men in black uh mm -hmm. and you can feel like the, his legs kind of sliding down your legs to the to the to the kind of toes match his hands kind of sliding down your hand until his extremities meet your fingertips and then the neck kind of settling into your neck and your head and then you go back to sleep and you just see everything that's happening is kind of has this vellum over it and you can feel the autopilot kind of sliding you back into the passenger seat into the back seat of whatever vehicle you imagine your brain is and you just slowly kind of step over barnaby step over the crystal go up the steps and out into the night of beyond till six and this is where we'll pick up the next episode i'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight uh, as always please please wear your mask please keep your distance please keep washing your hands and please get yourselves vaccinated if you haven't uh, i am putting in some phone numbers if you need any help in the chat if you're watching live on twitch uh, because mental health is part of our general health and there shouldn't be any stigma or taboo about it so please 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 if you feel like you need help please seek it out uh, there's no shame in asking for help and if you are a family member or a friend of somebody that is usually a strong personality, please reach out to them. Please wish them a happy weekend, uh, see how they're doing, because any, any interaction can be a change in a trajectory that is pivotal. Uh, so please reach out to somebody. Uh, if you feel like you need help, please know that there's no stigma and there shouldn't be any taboo about it. Uh, if you need help, please get it. It's just like when you have a cough, if you feel like you need to go to the doctor, you do. And this is the same thing. So please, if you feel like you need help, go ahead and check it out. Uh, please, I hope to see you again for our Monday special event for our Vampire the Masquerade game. Uh, I hope I see you on Wednesday for our Legend of the Five Rings game. And if not, I hope I see you next Friday for our season finale of Star Wars Out in the Dark. Please take care of each other. Have a good night and be safe.